Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and welcome back to my bonus channel for my combo class. Today I want to answer a question that I get asked a lot in my streams and comments. I talk a lot about prime numbers, the whole numbers that can't be divided by any other whole number except for one and themselves. Or at least that's the most common way they're defined, although I prefer the equivalent definition, which is that they're the whole numbers with exactly two factors. And what we're going to go into today is why isn't one considered a member of that family? By convention nowadays in math, typically the whole numbers are split into a few categories. One is known as a unit, and in fact, out of the whole numbers, it's the only one that gets that title, the unit, because one is so important and different. One is a different sort of building block to what primes are, and a lot of ways of constructing mathematical axioms and systems of arithmetic and logic start with having to define what one is, and from there, with the right successor operation, you can use one to create any number, either by having an operation that creates the successor to a given number and continuing that, or by playing around with addition and a few ones, you could add up to any number. But when we use addition to create a number and see how many ways can I make a number with addition, it's much more complicated and relates to something known as the partition function. Whereas when we look at how a whole number is built from multiplication, it's a little simpler. The number 28 can be split into 2 times 2 times 7 and then can't be split any further because that's its prime factorization. And for another example, if I take the number 36, I can split that down and divide it until I get to 2 squared times 3 squared. That's the primes that make up 36, a pair of 2s and a pair of 3s. And these can't go any further. But what if I allowed 1 to be a prime as well? Well, I could say that that is also a factorization of 36, or 1 squared is, or 1 <clears throat> cubed, or any amount of times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1's at the end. And this would actually be a pretty big difference in what these prime factorization structures could be used for, or how we could define them. When one isn't allowed in the club, numbers have a singular prime factorization. There is one way to do it for each number, a fundamental building block that creates the numbers, which is why primes can be seen as so important in the first place. And when people ask why are primes important, it's almost like asking why are whole numbers, multiplication, and having a structure important? If you think those three things are important, you have to think primes are important. But once we add in one into the club and allow any number of times ones, there's not only not a unique prime factorization for each number, but there would be an infinite amount of possible prime factorizations because there's an infinite possible amount of times ones, or in other terms, times one to any power that I could tack on to the end of that factorization. And so if one isn't defined as a prime, then we are left with a problem where we could redefine this idea of a multiplicative structure and say that numbers have a unique prime factorization apart from one, which can have any amount of its exponent in the prime factorization. We could edit that definition and we'd also maybe have to edit a few other things we like to know about primes. Like it's nice to know that for any prime number, any multiple of it won't be a prime number. Like any multiple of three, apart from the first multiple itself, can't be prime. For seven, apart from the first multiple itself, any further multiple can't be prime. We'd also have to edit that convention or rule if one was in the prime club. We'd have to say 
every multiple of a prime beyond the first multiple isn't a prime, except for multiples of one. That doesn't count. And we'd have to find a large handful of conventions and definitions that are handy to know or use about primes and tack on a little addendum and say, except for the case of one doing that. So we're left with a little bit of a choice. And it is a choice whether we want one to be in the prime club or not, because these are just words we've chosen to try and represent concepts. Prime can mean whatever we want it to mean. And the simplest difference in whether we include one or not could be kind of boiled down to the question, are we going to say that primes are the numbers with two factors exactly? Or are we going to say that primes are the numbers with two or fewer factors? That would then include one in the club with the primes. Or with the more common way you may hear primes defined, the difference would be whether we say primes are numbers whose only factors are one and themselves, which is a distinct separate number from one, or that primes are only numbers that their only factors are one and themselves, which could be the same, one and or themselves. And when we make that choice, it seems very logical that we might want to go down the road where we don't have to tack that addendum onto so many rules saying except in the case of one. Because what do we really gain from one being a prime? We're certainly losing some things by having to tack on all these addendums and make every definition about primes a little longer. But we're not gaining as much as we lose. And since it is really a choice, it reminds me of another question we could ask, um, which when I was wondering why, when people ask, why isn't one a prime? It made me think we could ask back, why isn't 2.5 a prime? Well, 2.5 times five equals well, let's say 2.5 times 2 equals 5. 5 is a whole number, and we were saying that primes are like building blocks that can multiply to a whole number. Well, 2.5 multiplied by another whole number got me a whole number. So if I wanted, I could have said that primes include fractions, and primes are a much bigger category of what a factor could be extended to. But that would get quite confusing. And then I would want to invent a new term for the whole numbers that do that. And I would realize that the new term I'm inventing was what the old term prime was being used for. So if we let our terms get too vague and include too many members, like a fractional thing, or including one, then we're eventually going to come up with another nickname that meant the whole number is bigger than one that do this. And why didn't we just use prime for that name? It's going to be a useful thing to have a name for. And prime has become the classic name. But funny enough, I read a lot of books about numbers. Like, uh, you know, I got books on books of numbers. And here's a handful of books about number theory in particular, which sounds funny to some people that number theory would be a different category of math than math in general. Some people think number theory, that just sounds like math. But there's other forms of math like logic and geometry and more. And number theory especially cares about whole numbers and which whole numbers can fulfill solutions to certain equations. And within that, primes become very important, along with some other things I love, like modular arithmetic. And when you look at these books, they all mention things about the structure of numbers and the relationship to primes. And funny enough, one of the books here, which is a pretty fun book to read, but I'll say has this one flaw. Oh, and hey, a squirrel just ran by. Nice. I'll say has this one flaw, is that it says that one is a prime. The author made that choice. 
And some other mathematicians in history have made the same choice. Although it's a convention nowadays that one isn't considered a prime, there have been times in history where certain mathematicians did include it in the list of primes. And this author decided to follow that convention that's less common, especially nowadays. But it leads to a problem, because in this book, they also mention the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, the name for the statement, and which is a provable statement, that each positive number has a unique prime factorization. And that isn't true when one is in the club, because like I said, we could tack on any number of times ones onto the factorization we want. So there's somewhat of an error in this book when they try and both use that useful fact of unique factorizations to demonstrate things, but they tried to let one into the club. Still a pretty good book though, and since I do have these out, I'll note that I highly recommend this book for anyone wanting to get into number theory. And for anyone who wants a slightly deeper dive, I'm really enjoying these ones, full of fun facts and history. And this one is a little denser and more full of problems for you to solve, and a little more like a brick wall of math text, but also quite useful and interesting. Always good to read some books. I get a lot of my knowledge that way. In any case, those are a few reasons why it's a choice whether one is a prime, like it's a choice whether two and a half is a prime. And it's much easier to follow the route where we decide that one is not allowed in the club, that we have three types of whole number, the units, the primes, and the composites. And the unit one is special enough that it does deserve to get its own club and its own title. In any case, thank you for joining me here for this little bonus lesson. This was just a question I get asked a lot, and I love doing live streams on this channel as well. I'm gonna be doing one just shortly after this video posts, after I've given people maybe an hour to watch this. And with these live streams, there's a few questions I really commonly get asked, so I'm gonna make some bonus videos sometimes about singular questions like I did today here that I get asked so much that I'll just be able to point people toward my answer in a video. In any case, I love you all so much. We just passed 90,000 on this channel of subscribers, which is just so awesome and cool. Also make sure that you're tuned into the main Combo Class channel where I put out the full episodes. Uh, we put out one about counting in base 2i pretty recently. And the next one is going to be about all these weird pan-digital numbers. Numbers with at least one of all the digits that a given base has. And that's actually a quite interesting rabbit hole I'm going to take you down of what those mean, both philosophically and mathematically, in the possibility of counting numbers. And stay tuned for more shorts, live streams, and bonus videos and stuff on here. Also check out the description for some cool links. And thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I've put all of your names in this description. Uh, so to anyone who wants to help support and get some cool bonus content, uh, definitely tune in and check out that as well. Thank you all so much. I love you. And for one last thing, I see my cat Dandelion perched up there. So let's get a little cat meow. Hey, dandelion. Oh, he's looking up at that bird nest. You see there's a bird nest up there? Dandelion, you're not gonna be able to get that bird. Don't worry, he's too clumsy to catch any of them. He's a creature of pure love, but I don't think he's ever been able to successfully catch one of those. All right. Love you guys. Have a nice one. I'll be on in a stream in like an hour.